we're going to wrap up 2022 with a review episode. This week, it's E-Flight's new UMX Twin Otter, and this airplane is provided to us by our good friend Scott Elmore. So, Scott, thank you, buddy. I think this one's going to be fun. De Havilland's Twin Otter went into production in 1966 and is still produced today. It is a stole capable aircraft that can carry passengers and cargo and is famed for being able to get in and out of some of the most remote areas on the planet as well as in and out of the shortest runways on the planet. If you're an aviation buff and you haven't went on YouTube and searched De Havilland Twin Otter landings, you need to. That's a rabbit hole worth diving into. E-Flight's UMX Twin Otter is a great looking airplane. It has a full LED light package, has a 19.4 inch wingspan, is 17.3 inches long, and weighs 3.7 ounces ready to fly with our 500 milliamp 1S pack. It also has AS3X and optional safe select. The UMX Twin Otter arrived unscathed. Horizon has this figured out. Their ultra micro boxes are pretty much legendary. They have a convenient carrying handle and that's a very secure way to transport as well as store any ultra micro. And included in the box is all the mounting hardware necessary for the optional float set should you choose to install those. As with all UMX airplanes, the Twin Otter comes fully assembled. There is no assembly required. You need to only pick your transmitter of choice, program it via the instructions, which are very good, and if you've got a battery charged, you're ready to fly. When it comes to setup, there are a few things we did that we think may help you. We're going to share those with you. The Twin Otter is an interesting little airplane. You do have full three-axis control, but it's not by conventional means. Normally, where you have aileron, elevator, and rudder, what you have with the Twin Otter is aileron, elevator, and differential thrust. It also doesn't have a steerable nose wheel. It's not a big deal. There's no problem with directional control as long as you're under power. However, when you land and come off power and allow the airplane to roll to a stop, if you don't do a quick alignment job on that nose wheel, which it's easily bendable, it's easy to do, it's not going to roll out straight. So align the nose wheel so when you land and you finish that rollout, you look like you know what you're doing. When it comes to flying the airplane, the differential thrust, especially when it's as, as aggressive, a differential thrust mix as this, is not going to feel intuitive to some. I really like to use the rudder. I, I use the rudder in my flying a lot, even when I'm not doing extreme stuff. And that's where this doesn't feel natural to me. So if you're like me, there is a trick to fix that. And that is, you simply put 75% expo on the rudder channel. The problem with this differential thrust mix is it's very, very sensitive. Some of you are probably going to notice when you try to taxi, it darts around. And to be smooth, you have to really, really try hard. Much harder than you normally have to if you have a steerable nose wheel. The other thing you'll notice is that the airplane kind of darts and yaws around in the air if you give it too much rudder and you're not super, super smooth. Doing hammerhead, you'll whip it over really quick. It just doesn't feel like an airplane that has rudder, but it can. So you do that 75% expo and it changes all that. It absolutely taxis like an airplane that has a steerable nose wheel and flies like an airplane that has a rudder. And we're going to do a little demo just to kind of show you what that does. I mean, clearly it, it tones down the mix, but we'll show you. What I'm going to do is run the throttle up and I'm going to engage left rudder, not at full deflection, just until the left motor stops. And when I do, I'm going to flip the switch and you'll notice an audible change in the right motor and you'll notice that the left motor actually spins up a bit, thereby just essentially toning that mix down some. So check this out. Okay, now that's not full deflection. This is full deflection. Alright, so I've got just enough to stop that motor. I'm going to flip the switch. You see that? It's a really, really simple trick, but you do that one setup change and it will make a world of difference and make this airplane fly like most airplanes that have a rudder. Okay, we've got our setup. We're going to get to the flying. First, we're going to show you our standard setup page. We wanted to note a few things about that. The first thing is 
the manual calls for a low and a high rate. We only used one rate, just the high rate. We knew that we wouldn't need the low rate. And you'll notice that on our high rate, there's no expo on the aileron and elevator. The manual calls for 10%. We just found that we didn't need any expo. It was responsive enough without being overly so for us, but expo is a personal preference. So you put it wherever you need to put it to make the airplane feel the way you want it to feel. The other thing is the 75% expo, when that's incorporated on the rudder channel to kind of tone down that differential thrust, it doesn't take away capability. That's worth noting. When you put the gimbal all the way to the extreme, you can still can get full power on one motor and take it away from the other. So you have the capability to do all the crazy things that the differential thrust makes possible for you, even with that expo incorporated. The other thing is, when it comes to the balance, you'll notice that our balance is a bit behind where the manual calls for it. That's because we use the lighter battery and getting it all the way where the manual calls for is a bit tough to do with no more mass than that. If you use the recommended 800 milliamp pack, it's heavy enough to get you there pretty easily. Worth noting that the airplane flew just fine with the CG a bit back and had some capabilities with it there that I don't think it would have if the CG was all the way forward, so just something to keep in mind. We will point out in the flying when we are and aren't using the Expo on the differential thrust so that you can see a difference in performance. And after you watch the flying, we'll meet you back here and we'll give you our final thoughts. So check this out. Right here we don't have the Expo incorporated into the rudder channel and you'll notice when we taxi it's not very subtle or smooth. This one was pretty simple. We got her trimmed out and started playing with it. I'm coordinating my turns with rudder and I'm having to use a really gentle touch to do it. I'm having to pay a little closer attention than I normally do with an airplane with rudder.
Now you notice how abrupt that hammerhead was? That's just simply a byproduct of how sensitive the differential thrust mix is. I'm using about the same gimbal movement that I normally would with an airplane with rudder. So here I've flipped the switch and I'm now flying with the 75% Expo on the rudder channel. I'm actually using a good bit of rudder or differential thrust for directional control while inverted and it feels a lot more intuitive, much more like rudder. Right there I was trying to get it into a normal flat spin. I could get it to spin but I couldn't get it to go flat right side up. However, inverted, it's a completely different story. This thing will wad right up and spin like crazy. And right there Heidi's wondering where to go. Now she's got it. The differential thrust really is all kinds of fun to play with. I noticed when I got the nose way up in ground effect, the wings rocked a good bit. It threatened to stall, but it never broke. It was a more straightforward stall higher up. I'm thinking that may be a byproduct of the fact that our CG is a little bit rear of where the manual calls for. Now you're going to see here, even with all the expo on the rudder channel, if you move the gimbal far enough, you can take advantage of the differential thrust and whip it around anytime you want to. Alright, we got a series of bonus clips coming up here for you. This is just to show you how great the light package looks in really low light conditions.
here we're demonstrating that with the differential thrust you can get a flat turn even without a rudder. And here we're going to show you how much easier it is to taxi smooth with the Expo incorporated into the rudder channel. Another advantage to the Expo is much smoother and more scale looking hammerheads. Here's a short takeoff. And we'll follow that up with a reasonably short landing. Of course, everybody wants to know if it'll hover. Let's see. I'm going to be honest with you. This is no Edge 540, but for a Twin Otter, that's pretty dang good. And there you go, man. This is a fun airplane to fly. I have to say, I really appreciate Scott for letting us use his airplane to review it. I love that that guy just orders stuff and has it sent right here. And he's like, hey, man, you review it and then give it to me when you're done. That is awesome. The only downside to that is now I think I need one. So, yeah, that happens. A couple of real pluses to Ultra Micros, just in general. You know, they're, they're tiny. They look good. They fly good. Everybody has room for one of these. I mean, even if your hangar is as full as ours, we can find room for something like this. That's a big, big plus. And the other thing is, with the forthcoming remote ID about to be pretty much enforced here in less than a year here in the States, these are exempt from that. There's no ID number needed. You don't have to file a flight plan. You just take your Ultra Micro to whatever schoolyard or park or field that you want to fly it. And as long as you're safe, you can knock yourself out and you don't have to worry about it. And that's really convenient and nice. Now, when this airplane was announced, I, like a lot of people, was concerned about the fact that it didn't have a rudder. That was a, that was a, a big negative to me at first. And then I got into a little conversation with Jason from Horizon Hobby, and he educated me on something that I kind of knew but hadn't really thought about. And that is there's tiers to the Ultra Micro airplanes. I think most of us, when we hear UMX, we think Ultra Micro Extreme. We're expecting UMX Timber X. A little bit sturdier, hardier airframe, a little bit bigger, a lot more power, 3S, full boat of lights, every feature that that airplane could possibly need, it has. Well, that's not how it actually works. The first tier are your indoor models, your strictly indoor models, kind of like the UMX Night Vapor. The Night Vapor is an airplane that, you know, it is pretty much an indoor airplane. It doesn't take much turbulence. I know when we fly ours in the house, when the AC or the heat comes on, that's enough turbulence to kind of rock that thing. You could fly it outside, but it needs to be dead calm. Then there's the second tier, and that is the tier that the UMX Twin Otter falls into. Those are the airplanes that are meant to be built a bit lighter, but with enough mass to do both. You can fly them indoors or outdoors. They're going to have some features, but they're not going to be full featured because the intention is to keep the cost down a bit. And then you have what we all expect everyone to be, the Ultra Micro Extreme, the UMX, the airplanes like the Timber X that whatever feature the airplane could possibly have, it has. So when I think about that, I get it. I mean, I get it. I understand why they wanted to save a little bit of weight and a little bit of cost, not to put a rudder, not to put flaps. That makes a difference. It really does. And when you think about it, some of you are probably going to remember the old UMX Aero Commander. That was an airplane that was a good bit larger than this, good bit heavier, and that was on 2S. Now, just imagine a new iteration of that, where you have a full boat of lights, two big 3S motors, you're running it on a 3S. In today's electronic prices, post-pandemic, that's a $200 to a $220 airplane all day long. So the fact that you get a twin that 
You can fly off the water if you want that has a full light set that is as capable as this is and that you can fly indoors for $169. I would say they hit the nail on the head. What they were shooting for is what they delivered and it does fly good. So to be quite honest, I can't call not having a rudder a negative. They didn't promise it. So it's not like you didn't get something they told you you'd have. They told you you would have differential thrust, and you do. And if you use our little setup trick and incorporate the 75% Expo on the rudder channel, you will be able to steer this airplane around on the ground like it has a nose wheel, and you'll be able to fly it like it has a rudder, and it will feel a lot more intuitive to you. At least it did for us. So I really like this thing, and I just don't see a downside to it for the price. This is a really handsome little model, and I can absolutely see me getting one. So, that said, we're going to leave a link in the description where you can go to Horizon Hobby and get yourself one of these. We are now a Horizon Hobby affiliate, by the way, so when you use that link to buy products from Horizon Hobby, we get a little bit of commission. It helps our channel, and we can do more of this stuff for you. So. Uh, getting a little funding on the channel is not a bad thing. There's some other cool things happening, and we'll be telling you that at the first of the year very soon. Uh, but we're going to kind of keep that close to our chest for now. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week with something cool with wings. Take it easy.